How's your mental health? I'm listening with Alanis Morissette. When it first started, I would have my nightly panic attacks, but then I started getting really curious about all the sensations. Like I just really started looking at, okay, so chest is, t- you know, I got really kind of granular in observing the details of what was really going on with the breath and my jaw. It's just survival strategy. It's cortisol cooking nonstop. You know, chronic stress is trauma. Explore more at imlistening.org. For the ones finding new ways to ensure the job always gets done. For the ones wearing many hats. For the ones who are hands-on, even from far away. And the ones keeping business moving forward. We are Granger, Offering supplies and solutions for every industry. With 24-7 support and experienced staff at over 250 local branches. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger For the ones who get it done. Uh, the PM team replayed portions of our interview with Troy Polamalu yesterday, and thanks again to so Troy did Ron. for so doing did Zeiss. it. A lot of people did, and it, it's because Troy was great. You know, uh, it, all credit due to him. Um, you know, he he said he still gets nervous for interviews. He doesn't do a lot of them, um, but I thought he he gave a lot of great answers in response to a lot of questions that we had of him, and a couple of the answers uh, Pony took and kind of spliced up into one answer in particular about the atmosphere of a locker room. And leadership in particular, it was a question you asked, I think, Colin, about uh, the atmosphere in the room. And then a question I had asked him in follow up about, you know, does that sort of familial thing still exist? No, I named names game? when I asked the question. I named defensive players because okay. that's who he's in. I named James Harrison and uh, Ryan Clark and Ike and guys like that. So it was pretty Casey specific. Hampton, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So here's uh, Troy's answer. Uh, it's basically two answers in one spliced together to our questions about leadership and, and the family atmosphere inside the Steelers locker room when he was there. Just kind of this whole family uh, environment, uh, really seeing friends as, as, as authentic members of your family. So that's something that, that was really easy for me. I think it's not traditional to have that sort of culture in the NFL. And it really takes uh, extraordinary leadership to have that sort of thing develop. You know, Jerome Bettis uh, epitomized that. Heinz Ward epitomized that. Joey Porter in our generation epitomized that. And I think a lot of Steelers fans would say, you know, that Joe Green epitomized that. And that whole generation of the 70s Steelers epitomized that as well. Does that? Can you believe he left Ben out of that? And here's the thing that I've heard that reaction where he's talking about. These are guys that were leaders that epitomized what it meant to be a Steeler. Mm-hmm. And you could say, well, you know, Troy was a defensive player, but then he includes Heinz Ward and Jerome Bettis in there. And the thing that I think is is glaring about omitting Ben is, okay, so once Heinz retired and Bettis retired and Porter left, those guys leave. Troy is still on the team, at which point Roethlisberger is coming into his own even more as a quarterback, and he still Leaves him off there, Chris. So that's Andrew's takeaway from Troy. Troy's answer. I I love those. Well, I love Andrew. Okay, Here. I love both those guys. But come He's on, he's trying too hard. We're- this is from the I need to manufacture drama when there's no drama playbook of I'm going to try to do sports talk radio and make people get mad about something when there's nothing to get mad about and there's nothing going on in the world of sports because it's the all-star break and the British Open is quite literally the only thing being played on the planet there is if if you had one million people and you said let's listen to this Troy interview those might be the only two people on the face of this earth whose takeaway was he didn't it's, mention Ben. It's about Ben. Yeah, I, I don't it, look, and I understand. We, we've talked about this often to go be, to go behind the curtain for a second. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. talk all the time about how hey, nothing moves the needle like uh, the quarterback. quarterback talk. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right? Because so, it doesn't. Cause, cause, right. And so, but this is just such a reach to to take something that Troy didn't say and perceive it as a slight against someone. They just I, I, can't lay off Ben. They need well, new material. Look, there's plenty of things Especially to criticize ben, ben Roethlisberger for. This, I, I don't, I just. Plus, th- early in Ben's career, he wasn't a leader. No. That's well documented. The, I don't get it. Like, I'm critical of Ben when it's time to be critical. We I both praise are, yeah. Ben when it's time to praise mm-hmm. Ben. But you see what, now, here's a real discussion that comes into play. When you hear fertilizer like that 
that came out of their mouths yesterday on this station, then it gives a little credence to what Ben said to Ryan Burr. That, that to me is now one in one does make two in certain instances because here's something that has, and it's exhausting. It is exhausting, especially from Mueller. It's exhausting. I wish he would move to Cleveland because here's the deal. It, when you hear stuff like that, Ben Tangent generally isn't even part of the conversation. It has literally is overused. Quite literally, nothing to do with Ben Roethlisberger. Troy Polamalu was asked a question: Who in is or were leaders around you, and how did they mold you, and how did it mold your team, and whatever? And to even push it further down the line, there probably were very few meetings during the course of Troy Polamalu's career in which he was in with Ben Roethlisberger. Offense meets the. It's like two. If you've ever been on a football team. It's two separate football teams. Well, I, you know, you're right, but I, I will grant he mentioned uh, Bettis and Hines, right? But again, we come back to the point that that you mentioned a moment ago, which is that when Bettis and Hines were here, Ben was not a leader. He wasn't, and, and even at the end, really, of Troy's tenure, you could argue, and you look, you 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 can argue all you want about Ben Roethlisberger's leadership. I guess mm-hmm. is is my point. We could still talk about it now to this very day if we want to. I don't I don't see how that how you get that out of what Troy said though. It's exhausting. The two things don't connect. I guess for me, I I, I don't see how Troy's comments there about praising the leadership of Porter and Ward and Bettis ties back into some sort of backhanded slap at. Ben's lack of well, leadership. Well, here's the thing. Even Maybe, if but even if you think Ben does lack leadership, I don't see Polamalu getting to that point there with that statement. The question was asked, too, in terms of a leader in atmosphere in the locker room and stuff like that. Right. Maybe Ben's best leadership quality is this. I'm going to throw a football in the Super Bowl and it's going to go through a guy's hand. Then I'm going to throw even a better football in the Super Bowl and a guy's going to catch it. Or at certain points in his career – we need to go 82 yards in three minutes and 12 seconds. Get in the huddle, go line your ass up, and we're going that way. There's leadership that can be manifested in many different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be Joey Porter trying to fight everybody or yelling and screaming on the football field. There, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's. I, I, I do understand what you're saying, and and, and here's the thing: I, I do have. We, we, there are different issues with Roethlisberger's leadership style or lack thereof over the years. We've got 17 years now of groundwork laid in regards to how we can examine that. So there's plenty to pull apart and talk about and criticize. And there are those moments like you talk about. Uh, Super Bowl 43. Hey, we're going to go score a touchdown now, right? As he walks into the huddle and they go score a touchdown. And those moments exist as well. It, it, it's It's... I just don't know how you tie what Troy said back to Ben. Because you have a bone to pick with Ben. Those dudes have a bone to pick with Ben. They tie everything. You could say today, you could say, man, do you look outside? I can't believe it's going to rain. Well, you know, if Roethlisberger didn't live here in the offseason, it'd be sunny today. But Sewickley's in the tri-state area, so it's going to rain because Ben's here. If Ben was in Florida or if Ben had a house in Arizona, sunny today. They they, tan- they tried, and I'm probably using the word wrong, but tangent generally or try to on the periphery, they try to pull Ben into everything. It's, it's exhausting in so much as this. It's like you have that neighbor or the person that you see somewhere – that you could be talking about anything and they'll bring in politics. Yes. It's that. They bring in Ben. Man, the Pirates, they aren't playing well. Well, you know why? Uh, a bunch of dead people voted for the president. Uh, right. Yeah. And there's <laughs> Ben. And then Ben. You know, Ben played <laughs> golf with Trump. Uh, uh, yeah. it, it's like uh, those. Stormy Daniels. All uh. the time. All the time from two to six on our station. Well. They just here's, bang here, Ben here's, around. No, and here's the thing, though, Colin. I don't have a problem with people going after Ben when it's when, when it, there's something valid to talk about, right? Correct. I've gone hard after Ben in the past. It, it, it's it, it it it's worth talking about when there's something regarding the quarterback <laughs> to go at him for. I and again, I value all different perspectives. The fact that some people are over on one end of the spectrum where Ben can do no wrong, right? And then there are people on on the other end of the spectrum, like Chris Muller, who who think Ben can do no right. I and then there's a whole bunch of people, including myself, and I think you, somewhere in between. I'm totally somewhere and, and, in between. So 
that, I'm fine with that spectrum of perspectives existing, but here's the problem. If what's being talked about doesn't include that person, I don't think you can necessarily tie it back to that person simply by omission. You could tie the British Open into Ben, though, because of the clock, right? Oh, sure. We could do that Definitely. today because it's, it's not too far from London, like an hour and a half where they're playing right now. Yeah. So they're, if we really wanted to do that. You if, know, Bryson DeChambeau's driver. He got driver, that attitude because of Big Ben. Yeah. The, <laughs> the other Big Ben. Bryson DeChambeau is acting like a petulant child. You know why? Big Ben. It's only 90 minutes away. Because when he landed in London, he saw, he Big, saw ben. Big Ben, the clock, and uh, he thought of Big Ben, the quarterback. Negative Nancy. All Sorry, the ben. time. Um, <laughs> Did you hear Troy's interview? By the way, check it out. It's still online uh, on our website. Uh, d- on See your Odyssey you app, 937thefan.com. Yes. I, I, you know, I like those guys, honestly, but it's just it's exhausting. It is exhausting sometimes. Well, anybody that goes in on Ben when there's no – whether it's Chris and Andrew or anybody else that goes in on Ben when there isn't anything to complain about, it is. It is. It's – it's a tenuous Tro- thread there between those two And Troy caught things. a side shot. He caught shrapnel because right. of it. You wonder why Troy doesn't do interviews. I know, because he's nervous, he said. <laughs> yes, yeah. he's nervous. He's nervous some numb nuts <laughs> is going to take him not mentioning Ben's name and turning into Ben isn't a leader. I like when Zeiss Which calls fine. Him- Maybe Ben isn't a leader, but good God, Troy has nothing to do with it there. I like when Zeiss calls him Mueller. It, you know it makes him furious. What's what's the those two whiny millennials? Uh, yes, is that what he calls them? Something them? like that. I, see, I'm the just, two whiny millennials I in think, here before me. I think there's just one. I honestly, I, I think there's just one. Anyhow. Anyway. Ben said that. <laughs> <laughs> Make contact. A collective psychosis is sweeping the nation. We're in the thick of the haze craze, and Elysian is introducing an altered state of IPA. Contact Haze is a tangled chemistry of mild haze, low bitterness, and an explosion of hop aroma. This hazy IPA bursts with notes of bright raspberry, currant, citrus, guava, and passion fruit. Available in six-pack cans in stores and in all Seattle Elysian locations. Make contact. Please 21 please enjoy responsibly. Odyssey now has hundreds of new exclusive music stations for you to discover your new summer soundtrack. Get moving with worthy workouts for a cardio sesh fueled by today's top artists. Hang in with your crew? Throw it back with picnic party for old school jams for your cookout. Or sail away with Odyssey's new yacht rock station, Jugger Yacht. There are hundreds of new exclusive stations to check out today. For summer barbecues, road trips, or relaxing poolside. For every mood, every interest, every passion. By Odyssey. Brought to you in part by Macy's and Geico.